In the previous video, you learned how to create a Git branch and how to use a Git branch. Now, in this video, you're going to learn how to manage your Git branches if you have many of them. For managing our Git branches, we have a very well-known methodology called the Git flow. The Git flow contains five different types of branches. The production branch, the develop branch, feature branches, um, release branches, and hotfix branches. We're going to go into each of these branches and what they do in the Git flow format, and also how to create the Git flow with fork. Now let's start by creating the Git flow. To initialize a Git flow, you can go into fork, go to the left hand sidebar, right click on one of your branches, and you will see a menu called Git flow. Under Git flow, you will see initialize Git flow. You see the five types of branches I mentioned before, the production branch, which is set to master, the development branch, which is set to develop. And after that, you will see a feature prefix, which is set to feature slash, a release prefix set to release slash, and a hotfix prefix set to hotfix slash. We'll talk about what these prefixes are slightly later. For now, let's go with the defaults and initialize the Git flow. So click on initialize git flow and immediately Fort will create the develop branch for you. So the master branch once again is used for production purposes. That means whatever that you show uh, people for your website or for your application, that is what the master branch is used for. The develop branch is where most of the de development work occurs. So most of the time we want to be spending time on the develop branch. Now let's say for example, you have something that you want to code and that is that something is very big. For example, let's say you want to refactor the entire code base. Now refactoring can be very big. And if you code directly on the development branch, you may be afraid you will break the development branch somewhere. And that will cause a lot of panic. We don't want to have that kind of panic when we code. So what we do is create a separate branch from development to handle the refactor. In this case, the refactor can also be called a feature. Other types of features may include adding new things into your project that is not previously there. For example, like adding a comment system into the, your website or adding a dashboard into your app, for example. Feature branches can contain almost anything. So most of what you can think of that will require another chunk of code will be located in the feature branch. So let's go ahead and create a feature branch in Fork right now. To create a feature branch in Fork, you can right click on any of the branches and go to Git flow, then select start feature. Now you notice that um, fork will start the feature from develop because that's what we use for Git flow. What we usually do is to start from the development branch, do the feature. And when we, once we're done with the feature, we merge it back into develop. So that's the start and end of a feature. You can name the feature anything you want. In this case, let's say I'm going to add a navigation to my, my um, website. Uh, I'm going to call this feature nav, NAV, and I'm going to start the feature. Once you click on start feature, you will see a folder called feature on the left side of the branches section. If you open up the branches section, you will see nav. So what this means is the feature prefix is actually a folder structure for you to look at your branches. Uh, if you look at the he Git history, you will see the branch called feature slash nav. And in that case, we can also tell that nav is a feature branch. That's very easy to say. So that's how a feature branch looks like at different parts of fork. Now for feature branches, we are going to add things into the project, right? So what we're going to do now at this point is to go ahead and add some navigation into the index.html. I'm going to open up the index.html file and add a navigation. So I'm going to add three links, uh, a link to my homepage, a link to my about page and a link to my contact page. Now for all of these links, I'm going to set the href to hash for now on purpose to break this because we're going to fix it later in the hotfix branch and then you'll see why. So home, um, about, and contact. So I've created all the three um, 
navigations right now and what we need to do next is as usual we have to commit whatever that we have created so we go back into the staging area stage the file that we have created create a comment message this should be very familiar to you by now if you have been practicing git for the last few videos for the comment message i'm going to say add nav i'm going to commit the file and once you commit the file you'll see that feature slash nav will be a comment ahead from develop and master and it will be on a commit that says feature slash uh, it will be on a commit that says add nav once we're done with the feature, we want to end the feature. Let me see, we want to merge it back into develop. This is where it starts to get interesting because one way of doing so is to merge nav back into develop using the method I showed you in the previous video. That is doable. But if you initialize a git flow, you can use git flow to do the work for you. To do that, you can right click on the feature you want to end. And in that case, that will be nav. Go under git flow and there'll be a finish feature slash nav option. Click on this option and Fork will ask you whether you want to finish the nav. You can have a choice to delete the branch as well. So it will clean up your branches. I usually go for the delete branch option. So click on finish and some changes will happen to your Git history. You will see that develop is now on the add nav commit. So what fork does for us automatically when we end the feature and when we delete the branch it's the same process we did by merging nav into develop and then removing the nav branch from the entire project so it's more like a shortcut for what we have done previously and it's pretty cool now let's move on and talk about the release branches release branches are used when you want to release your app to your users so what you're going to do is to stop production of all new features, then um, fix any bugs that you have, and then merge it back into master. But if you have a bigger team, you don't want to stop people from creating features from on the development branch as you fix the bugs for release, right? So that's why you split it into a different branch. So the release branch, um, can be created with git flow as well. Go to any of your branches on the left hand side of fork, right click, go to git flow, select start release. When you have a release branch, um, you'll notice that the release branch will also start at develop. That is uh, a design by default because we want to say, this are the things from the development branch that we want to go into production. So we start from development, go into, um, hotfix. Yeah, sorry. And we're going to development and we start into a release branch. For release branches, we usually give the branch a name that is like a version number. Uh, so this will be easy for us to go back into different versions or for our users to use different versions of our product. So for this case, we are going to say the version number is 1.0.0. I'll go into why we use a version number with three digits um, in the later uh, in the next video so for now we are just going to continue with this once you have decided on your version number you can click on start release and then fork will create a branch that is called 1.0.0 it will also create a release folder on the sidebar very similar to what you see in the feature branch now let's say we didn't find any bugs in our current release we are just going to push the release back into master. So what we're going to do is to end the release feature. Uh, to end the release feature, you can right click on the branch that you want to end the release, go to git flow, click on finish re release. And in this case, um, git flow will ask you whether you want to first delete the branch and second, whether you want to back merge master in the develop. Uh, I'm going to explain what that means. But first, let's click on the delete branch and we'll see what happens. When you click on the delete branch, you will see the git history change again. It starts to get a little bit complicated. First, you will see the master branch and the 1.0.0, which is our release previously, as a different as two separate tags. And the comment message will be merge branch release 1.0.0. So what that happens is you merge the release branch into master 
and at the same time you create a tag called 1.0.0 if you go if you look at the tags uh, menu in the sidebar you will see a tag called 1.0.0 at the same time which is why you see the tag 1.0.0 beside master now tagging is another functionality that git provides and we're going to go into tagging in a later video so for now let's let's um understand what the git history is feels like so far at this point we said that we merge release into master and at the same time we also want to merge release back into develop because once you have created the, the bug fixes you also want your development um, branch to be updated with the latest bug fixes right so that's what we usually do and that is why it merges two ways in this case which splits the entire git history up a little bit and it starts to get a bit confusing but don't worry about it it's just the way it is when you use git flow you probably want to get used to it now if we if you want a easier way to visualize things uh, atlassian has a very good blog that talks about git flow and they have really good pictures i'm going to steal one from um, alexander's blog and i'm going to show it to you this is what a release will look like so let me explain what happens in this picture, right? Horizontally is the commit timeline. So the earliest commit will be on the left hand side, the latest commit will be on the right hand side. So if you follow my mouse, uh, this two portions on the second line yeah, are the release uh, commits. So this is the release branch. The release branch will start from the develop branch. Then you create any commits to fix any bugs and then you push that into master. So master will move up from wherever it was previously to the same point as where your release is. And then you will merge that release back into develop. So you can continue developing. So that's how it looks like. Uh, much easier to understand compared to the Git history that you see, right? Uh, I'll give you a link to this blog post by Atlassian in the description below because it is really, really useful. You can use it to double check what we just talked about on GitFlow for a better understanding if you need to. Now, there is a final type of branch and that is the hotfix branch. The hotfix branch is used when you have a bug on the master branch that you just know that you can quickly, quickly fix it so people can be free of the, uh, can have a bug free experience, right? So what you do is to create a branch from master and from that point, you fix the bugs and you merge it back into master. At the same time, you also merge it back into develop. So the development branch will contain the, the bug fixes. So on a pictorial process, it kind of looks like this if we put everything together. Again, this is from Atlassian's blog. If you have a hotfix, you'll create a branch for master and then you merge it back into master and develop at the same time. Now, let's take a look at how fault does it, right? To create a hotfix, you can do the same thing as we did previously. That means go back into the left-hand column of your fault menu, click on any of your branches, go into git flow and select start hotfix. Fault will ask you for the name of your hotfix. Now for hotfixes, we will also create a tag at the same time because we are merging back into master. So we will use a version number. So in this case, let's use 1.0.1 .1 as our version number. I'll go into why we use such a version number in the next video. Click on hot, start hotfix and then um, Git will create the version 1.0.1 .1 from your master branch. So in the git history, you will see hotfix slash 1.0.1 and master on the same branch. Now, we're gonna create some, we're gonna fix something, right? So let's fix the stupid error that we made previously and that's giving hashes as links. We're gonna fix it up and give it the correct links. So home, about, and contact. After we fixed it up, we have to commit to push the changes as before. Um, so I'm gonna say fix links as my commit message.
then once you have this fixed link commit, commit message, you will see that hotfix slash 1.0.1 will be ahead of master again. Now, let's say we're done with our hotfix. Everything is now prim and proper and there are no more bug fixes that we found. We'll merge it back into master so people can see the latest updates, right? What we can do is to, again, go to the branch, right click, select get flow and select finish hotfix and you can choose to delete the branch which i will usually do as well to keep the branches clean when you finish the branch look at the commit uh, history again and you'll see that master and 1.0.1 will be on the same commit message that means 1.0.1 uh, the 1.0.1 branch has been pushed into master merged into master i mean and a tag of 1.0.1 .1 has been created and at the same time the tag of 1.0.1 .1 has been merged into develop which which is why you see develop in another commit so that's what uh, happens when you use a hotfix and when you use git flow the whole git flow thing sounds very complicated the question is do you need to use git flow in all your projects uh, I would say the answer is no. I don't usually use Git flow in any of my projects, to be honest. Um, it is very useful if you have a big team and if you need to run all the branches concurrently. But for a smaller project, like what I usually do, I think that uh, Git flow is a bit of an overkill, which is why what I usually do is to create my own production branch and create a development branch and then I'll create um, feature branches. Once the features branches are done, I'll merge them into the development branch. And from the development branch, I will start fixing bugs if I need to. And then I'll create a tag and merge it back into master myself. So what I did on my own is kind of using the git flow system, but without actually creating the actual release and using it. But you can use the git flow system if you want to. You can don't use the git flow system if you want to. What matters is you have a way to manage your branches. So that's what a git flow is for and how you manage branches effectively on a project, even if you're on your own or even if you are together with a team of people. That's it for this video. In the next video, I will show you why we use version numbers like 1.0.1 .1 and 1.0.0 as version numbers for both releases and hotfixes. I'll see you in the next video.